Hey, Miss V here. Outside today, y'all. First day, it has not rained in three whole days here in H-Town. I'm just happy to be sitting outside just chatting with y'all today. It's been a, a little cool outside, but having lived in the Baltimore, D.C., Virginia area for 10 years, hmm, it's, it's great to me. Because this time of year, um, by Thanksgiving, it, while I was there for those 10 years, you could expect snow for Thanksgiving. If you didn't get it for Thanksgiving, you surely got it for Christmas. So this H-Town weather is great. I love it. So haven't been doing much today. I got up this morning, ate a little breakfast. And I was able to run over and jump in a chat. Uh, it happened to be DJ was on, so I jumped in her chat and uh, uh, spoke to everybody like I always do. Whoever chat I'm going into, I always speak to the commentator. I always speak to the chat, the people in the chat. And uh, I've been out here on these YouTube streets, like I said, in her chat this morning since August 13th. 2020 that's a long time almost 10 years coming up because this is 2023 coming up so um you know most of the content creators uh that came up most of them came in in the last two years and the ones i don't know are the ones that came after august 31st this year a lot of y'all i have not been able to visit your pages uh come on to your channels a uh, few of you I have gotten to uh, visit in your channels and, uh, you know, leave a comment or hit the like button. That's one thing I always do when I come into your chat. If I take the time to come and go on to your channel, I'm going to hit the like button, either coming in or going out. I'm going to speak. I'm not necessarily going to stay in that a whole time. It depends on what you're talking about. You know, um, if it's something interesting or something I want to see, I'm going to stay in there until the end if I can, if I have the time. Um, if not, I'm going to tell you goodbye so you know when I'm gone. I, you know, I got things to do too. I do have a life outside of YouTube. But uh, DJ had a real interesting chat uh, last night and this morning. And um, very Mm, interesting for DJ. It was it was it was different. Um, I'm beginning to see another side of her and who she is, and that's what I've been basically doing for the last two years. Because most of you who have been on here for the last two years, y'all know me from Tea Time with Chrissy, who is now Chrissy Chronicles, because I co-hosted on her page for uh, maybe about three or four months until I had to leave Texas and go to Louisiana to see about family uh, who was sick at the time. It had passed on and I'm kind of like in the still grieving process so it's kind of hard for me to drop videos right now because I have my moments, I have my days and I really didn't want to come out onto YouTube after I made up my mind that I did want a channel finally until January. But Chrissy was so elated when I told her I was going to get a channel. She told it on her page, which kind of forced me to come out before I was ready. But I've had those challenges all of my life. So I, I'm, I'm in for the challenge, Chrissy. Thank you. Because when I woke up the next morning, I had 128 subscribers with no videos. So I want to on my channel build nice and slow i'm not in no hurry to do anything i'm not in no competition i ain't no clout chasing going on over here i'm just living life my channel is all about inspiration motivation education and a little humor because it wouldn't be me if you didn't have a little humor in your life now miss that she gonna say or do something that's funny that's gonna make you laugh before the end of the video so I'm just sitting outside, chilling, trying to think of what I'm going to do later on this afternoon. I've already gone out, did my little shopping for the day for the house. Y'all, 
I did a carton of sand. I had said I wasn't buying anything for the rest of the year. 2022, I was going out with what I had. Stop to buy stuff for the house. There's a hidden treasure consignment shop that I just, I love this place. It's a place where people in the area come and they bring their things. And I, I was taking some things in there to put on consignment from the house because y'all know I'm downsized since it's just me now. And I was taking some things into the consignment shop to put uh, on display to be sold. And I walked around and I found this chair and I had to have it. It was the perfect chair that I was looking for. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Lately, I have been into this animal. The, I, don't, I don't really care too much for the zebra, but these other animals, mm, they coming into my house, y'all. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. It all started from some pictures that I had bought in Jamaica, in Montego Bay. I was there probably, I went to a wedding of a friend of mine. Uh, that has been probably 20 years ago. And I have packed these pictures from house to house, place to place. They've been in every room in the house. And this time around, they're in the living room. They're in the family room area, okay? Uh, they've been in the hall. They've been in the bathroom at another house. They've been everywhere. But I love these pictures because the lady who made them in Montego Bay, she made them down at the flea market. And they're made by hand from scratch. And I brought the uh, canvas cloth that she made it out of. And it's like wood, the giraffes made out of some type of wood. And it's on a black canvas. And then I brought them back. And I have a friend who has a picture framing shop in Houston. And I took them to him and had him to frame them. And it's just a keepsake of mine. You know, it's a memory of when I was in Jamaica 20 years ago. So I had to have this chair. Because this chair goes with the black leather sofa and the black leather love seat in there and I don't have a chair in there now because the chairs that I had were too big to fit into the space I have now so I took a whole house and I had to pick from this house what I could bring into this space in this place hmm it's, it's hard y'all because I mean I'm 68 so I've been keeping house since I was 25 my first home I bought in November of 1978 and I had a little bit from that home a little bit from the home in Baltimore a little bit from the home in Dickinson a little bit from the house in uh, Denver uh, well apartment in Denver a little bit from the apartment in St. Louis and I'm trying to take uh, all these houses and put them together for my senior years. I'm, I'm, I'm managing, you know, it, it's me, it's mine, so I can do what I want to do. There's nobody to tell me, oh, I don't want that there, I don't like that there. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's a me, mine, I kind of deal until I'm out of here, you know, to the next life. So I'm putting it together and I'm really enjoying it. And I think it's going to be perfect just perfect for me in my old age okay so now let's talk about these youtube streets you know i live out on youtube road and i have to visit down on the street every now and then so i went down on the streets uh this morning and uh the content creator was talking about the og and that had never been addressed i never said anything about what happened with you know our relationship what happened with me and him because i was a supporter of his and um this morning i addressed it on that channel what really happened between us you know people like drama and people like making up stuff because that's what they did when you know we had the fallout but 
I told him this morning for the first time. He and I fell out because of trees. His whole commentary was behind trees, 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 trees. And I would always tell him, look, it's too much out there to talk about. Find some other commentary to talk about. I don't care if you talk about nothing but the weather. I mean, in different parts of the country, everybody on your channel is from a different part of the country. You can talk about the weather in each, in each place and, and, you know, chat with us about that. Uh, football season came about. Let's talk about some football. You know, there's so much we can talk about out here on these YouTube streets other than tearing down and talking about each other. And I really didn't like the fact that you have been with her, lived with her, and then you're going to talk about it. I, I didn't think that was cool. Then or now. I, I just don't like that. No. That's your personal business. You should have kept that off of here. It ain't had nothing to do with us. We ain't need to know none of our, all this. Too much information. So that was the fallout between me and him. Uh, like I said, I, once I'm done with you, I'm done with you. You know, I don't have no bad feelings or uh, no headache, heartache. I don't have none of that. I'm just done. And that's anybody, you know, in life. I don't argue with you. I don't fuss with you. I don't go back and forth. I'm not that kind of girl. No, no, no. When I'm done, I'm done, and I just disappear. Okay? That's who I am. You may never see me again in life. I don't know nobody out here on these YouTube streets. I co-hosted with Chrissy. And I've never met Chrissy in person, much less anybody else out here on these YouTube streets. I only know you from YouTube. You only know me from YouTube. You don't know me to be making uh, commentary on me. You don't even know nobody who know me to make the commentary on me. But you will. As I go along with these YouTube streets, you will meet people who have known me who will tell you who I am. I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have to tell you. They will. They've known me for a long time. Like I said, 40, 50, 60 years. So it's going to be kind of hard for you to come out here and say anything about Miss V when you don't know Miss V. But I'm going to bring people on here who do know Miss V. And they're going to tell you she is who she is. She's no different on YouTube. You know, a lot of people come on here and they say, I'm no different in real life than I am on YouTube. But uh, are you really? Are you really like you? what you say you are on YouTube? It's your business. I don't know because I don't know you. I just know me and who I am and what I'm going to do and what I'm going to say. And you put words out there about Miss V. I'm a comment reader. I've seen it all in different channels. I might have been in the bushes, but I saw it. Mm-hmm. I've been called an alcoholic on a channel. Baby, you will never find a D-U-I-D-W-I on my record. <laughs> Not you and won't. But uh, I didn't challenge you. I didn't call you a lie. I let you put down there whatever you want to put down there. So now you never come with the receipt, and you ain't. Because it ain't nothing out there for you to come with. It is what it is. Okay. Uh, I've been called a sugar mama. Prove it. Where's the receipt? Where's the plane ticket to wherever I was supposed to be going? Um, I thought that was horrible to say something like that to a married woman. Because you don't know how much you could have caused destruction in my home. Had not we been the people and knew each other as well as we did. It's okay. Uh -huh. Okay. That's fine, too. Uh, like I say, what you didn't realize is that there were people following me when I was on Chrissy Chronicles that knew you had some issues and that you didn't know me. That's all right. <laughs> it's good. Like I say, I've been challenged all my life, and it's all in how you address the situation. I felt no need to say nothing. I don't have to come out here and defend myself from somebody I don't even know. Somebody who's behind a screen that don't even show their face. And I'm going to go back and forth with you. You got it twisted. That's a waste of my time. And I don't have time to waste. I don't live three-fourths of my life. So if you think I'm going to go back and forth, you got it all messed up in your head. Better get it together when it comes to me. So, um, 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. I just wanted to come out and chat with my family for a little while and talk about these YouTube streaks. My nose is always itching. Every time I get on uh, camera, my nose start itching. What is wrong with it? Mm -hmm. It is what it is. So I have gotten out once this morning. I went to CVS yesterday to pick up some medicine. I don't know what's wrong with my arm, but this arm has been hurting for two whole days. So a girlfriend came by yesterday, and I was telling her about it, and she was like, take 500 milligrams of ibuprofen. It, it might go away, and uh, that's probably just Arthur riding. And I said, oh, uh, Arthur ain't riding me. I rebuke Arthur in the name of Jesus. He got to get on down the road. Arthur riders ain't, uh-uh. I ain't even putting that out there. I'm at the age where I probably should have, but uh, uh-uh, nope, mm-mm. But it, I mean, it was just an ache all the way down from like here, down all the way to the wrist. And I, 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 don't, I don't remember, I haven't fallen or bumped it or anything. I slept on it, that's what I did. And man, it, it's just painful. So I went down there to get the arthritis medication to put rub on the arm and then I was gonna get the 500 ibuprofen to take for the pain I get down there and y'all know I'm on Medicare and I was gonna use my card where they give you on um, the plan that I have is $150 worth of free medication over the counter you can either call it in and have it delivered to you or you can go down to the CVS I have to use CVS on my plan and pick it up or what's the other choice go get it call in or go online and and uh, pick out your medicine and they still will send it to you so the CVS is just right down the street, so I decided I'm just going to run down there and pick it up, and that way I can bring it on home, because y'all know how I am about ordering stuff. And I already told you about that. When I want it, I want it, and I'm going to bring it home right then. Okay, I get down there, and the people don't know how to check me out. The manager's not there. The manager's gone, and she's the only one who know how to do this. I went to the pharmacy. The pharmacy told me to go up to the cashier. The cashier was very honest and told me he didn't know how to do it. If I could come back this morning between 10 and 2. That's another trip. Okay. I got up this morning. Got myself together. And went back down there again. Same thing. Don't nobody know how to do it. The man who said he would be there this morning. He lied. He wasn't there. So the lady at, that was doing the register told me, she said, well, you need to go back to the pharmacy. They probably know how to do it. I said, okay, they ain't know how to do it last night, but I'll go back there. So I did. When I got there, that's what they told me. The manager was gone to lunch, and they didn't know how to do it. How you going to run a big old operation like this, and you haven't trained people? That's, uh, never mind. They ain't none of my business. Anyway, um... There was another lady there, and she says, I've never done it, but I've watched the lady name, Anna, I think she said was her name, do it, so I'm going to try. The lady just kind of followed the directions on the screen and was able to do it, check me out. I got the free medication I needed and got my receipt and walked on out the store. So, you know, that's, that's just the way my life goes. I don't know if anybody else goes through as many changes on a daily basis as I do, but it's always something that's challenging that I got to try to figure it out or whatever. I mean, I just went through another challenge about a month ago trying to get back home. Um, when I went down to take care of my brother, my nephew picked me up and we rode down together. Uh, while I was there, my sister-in-law told me and my brother use whatever cars there at their house. And they gave me the keys. The keys were on a board inside of the kitchen, right as you go out the door. And so I used her car for a little while. And when her Mercedes is too low to the ground where I couldn't help my brother get up out the car, we went over to his truck. And he had bought him a new truck back at 
last year, I think it was. And so it was a big truck too. I mean, two seats in it with a long bed. So um, I was trucking it. I was a trucking kind of girl. Me and my brother, we were out there just going everywhere, doing everything the last three months of his life. And um, so after he passed away, it was time for me to come home. He passed away August the 30th. So from August the 30th until the end of September, you know, my sister-in-law is busy, you know, after the, the funeral and all of this. And her, uh, my nephew is working, he, uh, his stepson, the one that was going to give him the kidney. He's a marshal there, so uh, he has to go back to work too. So my thing was, I just get a rental car and I'll drive myself back home and I'll turn it in in the neighboring town. And I called because I'd been a customer manager for Hertz, so I'd go to Hertz, I'd get a 40% discount from them. Hmm, I thought. I called Hertz for almost three weeks. And they put my name on a list. They had a list going. Now you gotta remember, we in small towns. Louisiana, Monroe, Shreveport, Bossier, Alexandria, those are the closest towns that would have a rental car. They put my name on the list. I'm supposed to pick it up on Monday at 11 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, or every Monday morning, I get this call. Um, Mrs. Robinson, I'm sorry, but uh, the car we had coming in that you wanted, it was um, a military car, Mrs. Robinson, it was an insurance car. They didn't get his car fixed, so he didn't bring it in, and you're on the list. And this has been going on from what I understand since COVID happened. They just don't have any cars. And they're really not particular about you taking their car away one way, because once you take it out of there, it does not come back to that location. So they lost that car. They can't make money on that car. The location you drop it off at will make money on that car. That's how that works. I've did that for almost a year at Hertz at uh, DCA Airport in uh, Washington, D.C. All right. So, Ms. V sit there and she figured that out. I was staying with a girlfriend who we had been friends since first grade. She had had breast cancer, so I was staying there and I was helping her get her house together and, you know, move things down a little low because she couldn't use her arm. She had, had reconstructive surgery, all that. So, um, finally, I realized I'm not going to get home if I keep waiting on these people or if I have to wait until one of my family members can take me home. And I'm ready to go home now. It's been almost four months. And so what I did is I had my girlfriend to take me from Monroe to a little town called Arcadia, Louisiana. From Arcadia, another girlfriend from third grade came to Arcadia and picked me up. She took me to Shreveport, where Greenwood, which is right outside of Shreveport, right on the Texas line. And from there, uh, another friend of mine, a couple, the Blues, came from Pearland to Greenwood and picked me up in his truck, loaded up everything, because y'all have been gone for months. I had a truck load full of stuff. He had two seats, full-size seats inside of his truck, and I only had this little tiny space to sit for three and a half hours back to Houston. But that just, you know, tells you that um, these people have been in my life all my life. The Blues uh, have been in my life. He came into my life around 1978. That's how long we've been friends. I, that's the year that I moved here from Louisiana. So all I'm saying is it's just good to know people. It's just good to be good to people and, you know, be kind. Because you don't never know when you're going to need a favor. I needed three favors to get home. It's three different people got me from one place to another until I got back home. 
And that only when I got back home, he and his wife got out the truck and helped me unload the truck and bring it into the garage. And, you know, not too many people are going to do that these days. Uh, friendships don't last that long, first of all. And if they came that far to pick you up, they just want you to get your stuff and get up on out of there. No, not them. Mm -mm, no, no, no. So, you know, the message here today is be kind to people. And if you see you can't, move out of their way. Don't don't bicker, argue, fuss with them. Just let them go on on about their business. Or you go on on about their business if they ain't going to go. Because they're going to say and do what they want to anyway. It ain't got to be true. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be factual. They don't have a receipt for it. This is people, just people. And, you know, we live in a time where you just really don't have that many people that really, really care. They say they do, but people will rock you with you for a season and a reason. I've had a lot of them comers and goers. But they'll never ever say that a Miss V argued with them, she fussed with them. No, say what you got to say, because I don't care. It ain't going to stop nothing in my life. It never has. It never will. Because I don't need you. You do you, and I'm going to do me. Say what you want to say. Matters not to me. <laughs> it is what it is. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do the rest of the day have no clue. It's kind of getting cloudy again, so I'm not sure if it's going to rain, but it's definitely getting cool out here. So whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to have to have a coat on tonight. And I want y'all to take care of yourselves till I come back again. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday, so I probably will drop a video tomorrow, inspirational video. Maybe a little clip from Miss V up there singing in the church choir, playing them tambourines. Give y'all a little praise and wish up tomorrow. But I got to get permission from my choir director and my pastor before I can drop that video. So uh, my pastor is well aware that I'm out here on these YouTube streets. I had talked to him before I decided to do it. And he told me, he said, be careful. That's the devil's playground out there. And he wasn't lying. I, I told him, I said, they already came for me. I don't think there's much more they can do that they haven't already said. So um, I'm going to let them know tomorrow that I actually have started my channel. And uh, I want to drop a clip from uh, Greater Barbers Chapel Baptist Church in Texas City. We come on live stream at 1015 on Sunday morning. And uh, we're on Facebook. So I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a good Saturday night. And peace out and blessings to you. Bye.